Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. And I've read you Psalm chapter four in its entirety and Psalm chapter five, verses one and two. May the Lord answer his hearing, reading, and applying of his holy word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you for that song, Brother Rashad. Praise yes, the Lord. Sir. All righty, brothers and sisters, we are back again. Uh, and we, uh, we are grateful to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that we are able to come before you again. And he brought us through another week, brothers and sisters, okay? Uh, welcome to another episode of Let Us Reason Together broadcast where we teach the Bible by subject and title. Support as always, and we thank you for supporting all of the IOG platforms. And uh, with us tonight... Reading is Brother Rashad from the Memphis, Israel of God. Peace and blessings to you, brother, and welcome. Good to see you. How are you? Peace and love, family. Let's get this bomb. I know I need it after this week. I'm pretty sure I ain't the only one, saints. <laughs> In Jesus' name. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Thank you, brother. And and, and y'all pardon me for a few minutes. I'm having some camera issues. Uh, as we go through the show, I'm going to try to work it out, okay? Uh, yes, I'm Brother James from the uh, Israel of God in the Bay Area. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Good to see you, Brother Kevin. Good to see you, Brother Rashad, and uh, to go to work with you, brothers. And uh, we ask everybody to like, share, subscribe, share, and share, okay, this video tonight. And also, uh, coming out the gate is Brother Kevin from the Israel of God in St. Louis. And Brother Kevin, I'm going to turn the mic over to you, brother. Uh, so you can start us off. Uh, uh, good evening, by the way, brother. Likewise, good evening, everybody. Good, evening. good to be with y'all. And as the title goes, for I am the Lord, I change not. Yes, sir. The Lord, uh, this like this lesson right here, is just showing us how consistent God is. And some people find, some people don't understand certain things. When the Lord said that he changed not, but then they read certain things and they're like, wait a minute. Look like he changed right here or right there. So we just want to point some things out to you. And we ask that y'all bear with us. A lot of it you didn't heard before. A lot of it you didn't read before. Some of you even understand this, but for the ones who don't, we hope that this enlighten you this evening. So we're going to start at Malachi, the third chapter, brother. Brother Rashad, Malachi chapter three, and we're going to read one verse. One verse. Let's see what Malachi said. Here. Go ahead. <clears throat> For I'm the Lord. I change not. Yes. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Oh, because if he, if he wouldn't have kept his word, then, then the sons of Jacob would have been consumed. That's what he letting us know. So he said, I change not. He's just letting us know. This is setting the stage right here. So now, let's go to Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Isaiah chapter 55. Yes, sir. Let's look at another prophet that speak on it. The Lord put it in his mouth. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 55. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. 
Isaiah 55. Remember what Malachi said. For I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Mm -hmm. 55 and 8. Go ahead, brother. What do you say? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. That's right. Go ahead. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. That's right. Go ahead. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but water of the earth, and maketh it bring forth the bell and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. The Lord said, if I open my mouth and say, I'm going to do something, mm -hmm. I'm carrying through with it. Yes. And he compared it to the rain and the snow that come down. He said, have you ever seen it reverse and go back up? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't saying that, right? He said, that's how my word is. They go forth out of my mouth, right? Yes, sir. Let's go to Genesis, the second chapter. Let's look at some milk here. Genesis chapter two. He told, he created this man and he told him something. He gave him a clear cut commandment right here. And we're talking about Adam. Adam. 2 and verse 16. When you get it, my brother, go ahead and read it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Wait a minute. This came out the Lord's mouth. He said he commanded him. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read, brother. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now what did Isaiah say? He said it ain't going to return unto him, boy. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said he don't change, right? Yes. Okay, let's go over to chapter three. We know the story of the woman ate. The, uh, Satan snuck up on a woman. Mm -hmm. She brought it to her husband, Adam. Let's see what the Lord say to Adam. Go ahead and read for his, for his uh, partaking. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Yes, uh, go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. First is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Go ahead and read. It should have been 19, my bad. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. But out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Oh, he said, but in the day that you eat of it, right? Mm -hmm. So now he letting that man know, now you going to die. Because guess what? You ate you you ate of that tree, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's go to Second Peter, the third chapter. Because you see Adam's multiplying, sleeping, he got put out the garden. And people were like, wait a minute, he said in the day that he eat thereof. He ate that particular day. Mm -hmm. Why he ain't dropped like a box of uh, rocks? Mm -hmm. Lord finna show you why. It's just under, getting understanding, you know, the Lord showing us this thing. Mm -hmm. Second Peter 3 and verse 8. Read that eighth verse. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that yes. one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. He told us don't be ignorant, didn't he? Mm -hmm. You can also find this in Psalm 90. This is where mm -hmm. Peter mm -hmm. quoting it from. Read that one more time, brother. One more yes, time. <laughs> but beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years. Yes. And a thousand years as one day. Day. 
So when he said that, what time frame you calculating by? Mm. You understand? Mm. So therefore, let's go look at it, and then I'm going to pass it over to James. Genesis, the fifth chapter. Let's run it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Genesis chapter 5, because he dropped dead in that day. 5 and verse 1, my brother. Go ahead. This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Now, this is the generations. He giving everybody, he breaking down all the different sons. Skip down to verse 5. What do he tell them? And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Why didn't he exceed a thousand? Mm. Because that's that day the Lord said, You ain't, mm -hmm. ain't going to surpass that thousand. That's a day to right. me. That's a day to him. <laughs> he kept his word that came out of his mouth, and look at what he did. Yes, sir. So if we did not understand that tonight, Tonight, now we understand it. Mm -hmm. Skip down to 27. Let's look at the oldest man that lived, though. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. Yeah, just wanted to put that on the table. Mm -hmm. Oldest one. 969. He ain't going no further than that. Nope. So this is showing us that the Lord don't change, and if his word come out of his mouth, it's a done deal. That's why it's talk. That's why we deal with prophecy, because prophecy cannot be overturned. It came out of his mouth. It's written. It's a wrap. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Brother James, just setting the stage. Yes, sir, Brother Kevin. A hey, from them verses. Them were some great verses to come out the gate with this title, but we could have just titled it "God Said." I said what I said. Right. <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> we could have just titled it that because he said what he said. He meant what he said. So why does he have to change? Why would yeah. he have to? You That's see? Right. That's right, so, bro. great, brother. Great to bring us out the gate. So look, I only have a few that I'm going to hit right here, but I want to start in Proverbs 24 and verse 21. As y'all can see the title, the Lord does not change. But let's show you something that he's getting ready to tell you right here. And uh, again, y'all, give me about another 10, 15 more minutes. I should have my camera up and going, okay? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Proverbs 24 and 21. 24 and 21, Brother Rashad. Go ahead and read that one. My son, fear thou the Lord and the king. Yes. And meddle not with them that are given to change. Do you all see that, brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. So whenever you run up on somebody that's talking about, hey, man, uh, the Lord changed this and he changed that and that's done away with. We don't have to do that anymore. You better research that three or four or seven times. OK, you better really look into it because the Lord told you he does not change, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Why does he have to? Why would he have to? OK. So now I just wanted to start off with that Proverbs right there. So now let's go to second John and, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10, because even back in Deuteronomy, the Lord said, hey, if your brother, or your mother, or anybody else uh, 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 try to entice you to move away from the true and living God of Israel and go deal with some other God, he, he, he has some real bad things. Uh, uh, set for that person that'll try to get you to do that. That's why he told you in Proverbs, don't meddle with the folks that are given the change, okay? You you have found your God in this Bible, and you deal with your God in this Bible. And I'm talking even with these 66 books, okay? So now, Second John, we're going to read verse 10 and verse 11. Go ahead and read, bro. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine... Mm -hmm. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. Why not, brother? For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. So now, do you see why the Lord say don't meddle with the folks that are given the change? Mm -hmm. Because and the reason I wanted to go there because you will have people that will come over here, and, and Israel God is not the only you know truth ministry out here there's some other places that will teach you the truth but when a person coming to the truth they get baptized 
they start working in the vineyard and doing things and everything is fine. Then all of a sudden you get a call from them one day. They said, man, you know something, the Lord and show me something. Really? What did he show you? <laughs> well, you know, if, uh, if I wear a pink shoe every Thursday on my left foot, you know, the Lord will bless me. Oh, yeah, read that to me, brother. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, and I'm just I'm just putting a little, just a crazy analogy like that, but they will call you and say, well, the Lord has showed me something. I want to look at it like this here, and from now on, I'm going to do it like that, and from now on, I'm going to start dressing like this and do all these other changes. Hey, man, everything you need to know is written in this book, and then when people start wanting to change things, and they can't read it in the book, and you got to pay attention, and the Lord say, meddle not with them, and then if they come to your house, you tell them, man, you know what? You need to go ahead and leave. And don't bid them Godspeed, okay? Right. Because the Lord don't change. And once you hook up with him, you had better not change either, okay? That's right, brother. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So now, let's go and hit Hebrews 13 and 8. <laughs> Hebrews 13 and 8. Perfect. Perfect, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Hebrews 13 and 8, brother Rashad. What did it say, Israel? <laughs> Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today. And forever. So I know we see that one. And that's a, that's one of them chest pocket ones that you stick in your pocket when you first start coming around here. Okay. Listen, the Lord don't change, but everybody want to tell you he did. And then they are blaming on the apostle Paul. Right. Why? Because they don't understand how that brother wrote and how he spoke. Which okay. He was no uh, fourth grade dropout. OK, nah, the, the brother could the brother could write and the brother could speak. And sometimes it will be on other levels and then it'll, it'll go past us because we don't understand <laughs> something or 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 we haven't been in the old book. So when we see something he's writing, we know what he's saying. You see what I'm saying, brother? Yes, sir. That's right. brother. Thank you on that one, brother Kevin. <laughs> yes, indeed. No, that's the truth, man. Hey, you got to be on. You got to be on a, a, a understanding level to know what Paul dealing with, brother. Sometimes it's like you said, it's like you said, James, you go grab what you need to out of there and get out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. It's like a dark room with some shelves in there and I need to go get something. Yeah. Hey, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna look at that jar I need on that third shelf to the left. I'm going to grab that jar and I'm getting out of there. Get okay? out of there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Get out of there unless you got some real total clear understanding of what you're dealing with and what you read. Okay. Right. right. So now I'm gonna go hit one more spot. I'm gonna slide the mic to brother Kevin, and when I come back, my my mic should be. I mean, my camera should be ready to roll. Let's go hit Ecclesiastes that first chapter, and pick it up at verse nine. Ecclesiastes 1 and verse 9, brother. 1 and 9. What does it say, brother? The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. Yes. And that which is done is that which shall be done. Mm -hmm. There is no new thing under the sun. Wait a minute. You mean the Lord didn't change something for us? Uh -uh. Huh? Uh -uh. There's no new thing saying? under the sun. Go ahead and read, brother. Is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. <laughs> Go ahead. It, it hath been already of old time, which was before us. Yes, sir. What verse there you is, at, brother? There is no remembrance, 11. Go ahead. There is no remembrance of former things, neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. So you see that, brothers and sisters? You see that title? The That's Lord right. does not change. There's nothing new under the sun. If That's he right. sat it on the table, it's what it is. That's okay? Right. And he and his word ain't going to return to him. Let Brother Kevin hit that Isaiah. His word is going to go forth and do whatever he say is going to do. All right? Mm -hmm. So don't get tied up with people telling you that God made some flip-flopping changes. Because if he was a flip-flopper, why would you serve a flip-flopping God who got a double triple mind which means he'd be unstable in all his ways why would you serve that God okay right. <laughs> what say you on that brother Kevin I'm passing the mic to you Israel let's go to the one that said he changed uh he uh the same yesterday today and forever so now let's go to Matthew the 19th chapter 
trip. They, these guys gonna ask him a question, man. They gonna ask him a question. Eh? I'm gonna tell you, Jesus know how to answer questions, sure and do. he know how to ignore you too. Sure do. When you talking crazy, he know how to hey, psh, man. <laughs> I'm gonna keep on drawing, you know, keep <laughs> on writing. You know, waste no time. But 19 and verse 1. Go ahead and read, brother. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these sayings, he departed from Galilee and came into the coast of Judea beyond Jordan. And great multitudes followed him, and he healed them there. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every call? Oh, to do what? Put her away. Mm-hmm. For every cause, go ahead. Right, and he answered and said unto them, "Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female?" He took and, you back to the beginning, didn't he? Right, yes, sir. Where this thing started at? Look, I don't change. Go ahead. And said, "For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh." Uh-huh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God have joined together, let not man put asunder. Now here they come with a rinky dink understanding. Go ahead. <laughs> they say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and to put her away? Uh-huh. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning, it was not so. He didn't say I. He said Moses. Moses. And he allowed it. He said because of the hardness of your heart stuff. Mm-hmm. He said, but from the beginning, what I quoted, what I instituted, was not so, brother. Go ahead. Nine. And I say unto you, whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, commit adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, doth commit adultery. Because the Lord don't like this. And he been saying, he been, it's been there. So now let's go to Malachi, the second chapter, to show you it's been there. Use another prophet to show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Show you out the mouth of Malachi. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 1. Two and verse one, the Lord said, this is what I've always felt. There shouldn't be no division. This is what he fit. This is how he feel. And guess what? That's the mind he got. It don't alter. Go ahead. And now, oh ye priests, this commandment is for you. Yes, sir. Go ahead. If ye will not hear, and if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, says uh-huh. the Lord of hosts, Yes. I will leap and send a curse upon you, mm. and I will curse your blessings. Yeah, I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart. You read Deuteronomy 28, and he's he letting you know Same these are the things I'm going to drop on your head. Mm. Skip down to verse 12 and read, brother. The Lord will cut off the man that doeth this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob, and him that offereth. An offering unto the Lord of hosts. Oh, he included everybody now. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying out, insomuch that ye regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it with good will at your hand. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Uh-huh. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And the wife of your agreement, you the one agree. If I stand on my word, you're supposed to stand on yours. What you say? Go ahead. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. Wait a minute. He made one in the beginning. He took you right back to Adam and Eve. Go ahead. Yet had he the residue of the spirit. And wherefore one, that yes. he might speak a godly seed. Yes. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. 
look, he was looking for a godly seed. They came through uh, uh, Abel because Cain was foul mm -hmm. and his lineage was disinherited. But then you had Seth and so on and so forth. We read about Methuselah and so on and so forth. But go ahead. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he ha hateth putting away. He, he what, brother? He hated putting away. away. From the beginning, he knew it. this thing wasn't supposed to be that way. Mm -hmm. That's why he said Moses did that, but not me. Mm -hmm. I allowed it, but from the beginning, it wasn't so. He got a consistent one-track mind when it comes to that. His word is his word. Go ahead. For one covered violence with his garment, said the Lord of hosts. Yes. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. That ye deal not treacherously. Oh, he said, take it to that mind of yours. Mm -hmm. That you don't deal what? Treacherously. treacherously. And we know what treacherously is. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to hide the potato salad. I'm going to hide the barbecue. You can't get none of this. You can't get none of that because we was arguing the other night. Me, five, me. Yeah. You did, you did this to me. All right, I'm going to do this to you. Mm -hmm. Back and forth, back and forth. But that's another lesson. Let's go to Psalm 111. <laughs> what you said. <laughs> yeah, that's another lesson. I don't want to start no marriage thing on her tonight. Uh-oh. Yeah, brother, you just get to typing that in. <laughs> I got a marriage question. <laughs> oh, man. Praise God, though. Yes, sir. Psalm 111, and we're going to read one verse 10. Read that 10th verse, brother. What the, is that? Oh, excuse me. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Yes. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Wait a minute. What understanding? A good understanding. So you can have understanding of things of, that's written. But I want a good understanding. Go ahead. Yes. His praise endureth forever. Now, how do we get that good understanding? Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Luke, the 24th chapter. Luke, chapter 24. Chapter 24. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. I think I messed James up on this thing. <clears throat> Let me go check him out. Okay. I know where I'm supposed to. I know where I'm supposed to stop it. Okay. 24 and verse 25. Go ahead. Then he said unto them. Oh, fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Yes, sir. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Yes. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them at all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. Yes, indeed, brother. Skip yes. down to verse 44. Yes. And he said unto them, these are the words which I speak unto you. While I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, yes. which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning me. Go ahead. What happened after that? Then opened he their understanding. Wait a minute. He did. Yes. Then what, brother? He Read opened their understanding. Oh, a good understanding have all they that keep his commandments. They endure it with him. And who opened their understanding? The Lord got to open your understanding. What you said. He turned that light bulb on your head. Go ahead. That they might understand the scriptures. Yes, sir, brother. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Oh, they no, that's on. 45. No, that's it. Right. Let's move forward. Let's go to Genesis, the ninth chapter. I got one more after that, and I'm going to pass it back over to James. Genesis chapter 9. Let's just take a look at it. So you need a good understanding so you can see these things. Like James was talking about earlier, we think the Lord, uh, a, a, a person that changed, that's given a change, 
when you read certain things, you see certain things like the animal sacrificial law. The Lord said he didn't desire that in the beginning. That was a shadow of good things to come. That's it. The Lord said, because you saying I need to hold something right here to keep from killing you. You understand? Mm -hmm. But man don't understand. You see, that comes with understanding time. Genesis 9 and verse 8. This is the flood that took place because of disobedience. And the Lord saved Noah in his house. Go ahead and read uh, 8 verse. 9 and 8. Yes, sir. Nine and eight. And God spake unto Noah and to his sons with him, saying, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. And with every living yes. creature that is with you, of the fowl of the cattle, excuse me, of the fowl of the cattle and of every beast of the earth with you. From all that go out yes. of the ark to every beast of the earth. Yes. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. Yes. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Wait a minute. Now he's saying what's coming out of his mouth. None of these things going to happen. And this is a covenant that I made with you and all the beasts of the field, cattle and everything. And God said. This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for a perpetual generation. How are you going to show and prove this? Go ahead. I do set my bow in the cloud and it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. He said it's what in the cloud? The bow, the rainbow. Letting this man know that. Go ahead. 14. And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. Yes, sir. What else? And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. Yes. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. Go ahead, and God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant, which I have established between me and all flesh that is upon the earth. Look how clear that is. It's just simple. Yes. But how, where, that, where that rainbow at? Let's go see. Because the Lord put it out there where that word is at. Let's go to Revelation, the fourth chapter. When you don't see it, let's see where it's at. Lord says so I can remember this thing. Four and verse one. Revelation four and one. Then I'm going to pass it over to James. Showing you that he is consistent throughout generations. He said perpetual generations. All the way down to our time we see this thing. Right. And yeah. that was years and years ago. Yes. Yes, sir. That's, that's what you call consistent, man. Four and verse one. Go ahead. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Yes. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, uh, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Go ahead. And immediately I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Yes, what else happened? And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto an emerald. What was right there, brother? A, a rainbow. rainbow. So what the rainbow was there for, the Lord created yeah. that thing for the purpose. Right. He said, it's going to remind me of that covenant. Yes, sir. Me. So the Lord ain't given to change. He, no, got no. A, he got a grounded mind. Don't need to change at all. What you say? And if he do, guess what? You can't stop him and neither can I. <laughs> <laughs> but now, I'm going to pass it back over to James. But 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 look, brother Kevin, good script. But look, you got people nowadays that'll say that that rainbow is for something else. Like God yeah. changed, 
change the use of it, right? But guess what? But 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 <clears throat> but when you see these people, they attach the word pride to everything else too. And we know what the Lord say about the proud, huh? Yes, sir, brother. But anyway, <laughs> let's yes, go to first. John. Let's go to first John chapter two, brother. Because the Lord doesn't change, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. That's right. We are the ones that do the change. He doesn't change. <laughs> right. First John, my brother, chapter two and verse seven. Two and seven. What that verse say, brother? Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, mm -hmm. but an old commandment which ye had from the beginning. So let me tell you something, all you people that go to church on Sunday and you hide behind Paul's writing because you don't understand. That's right. Mm. He That's said, true. I'm not writing a new commandment to you, but an old one. He said, which you had from the beginning. Now, we are way in the back of this Bible. That's we, right. We deep <laughs> in the New Testament right here. We in the backyard of the Lost to the end. Right. Yes, sir, of the New Testament. And he's saying, he said, the old commandment which he had from the very beginning. Why? Because God does not change. <laughs> but people will say, well, who people who lack understanding will say, well, the father brought one thing, Jesus brought something else. No, he didn't. That's you right. Go, you, go, you go John 7 and 16, he said, my doctrine is the doctrine of the one that sent me. Yep. Okay. So look. Go ahead and continue, brother. Mid seven. The old commandment is the word which you have minute. heard. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Brother Shaw, can you start that sentence over and can you shine the light on the word is? That's right, brother. Start that sentence over, brother. Go ahead and read. My pleasure. The old commandment is the word. No, 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 no. Watch this. The old commandment is the word the word yes sir go ahead which That's ye right. have heard from the beginning it's the same old word brothers and sisters that's mm -hmm. why paul can teach you jesus from the prophets and the law that's right jesus told you that the that the and he taught in luke 24 he taught some brothers who didn't realize that was jesus he said he came out of moses and the prophets Mm. And told them and showed them about all the things that was supposed to happen to him. Look, brothers and sisters, the old word which you heard from the beginning is the word. Okay, it is the word. So look, let's go to First Corinthians fifteen and show you something else, just to show you, give you a little example of how every writer in this book was on the same page. One accord. There, everybody was on the same page. Yes, sir. One accord. 1 Corinthians 15. And let's start at verse 20, my brother. What that say? But now is Christ risen from the dead and yes. become the first fruits of them that slept. Christ became what, brother? The first fruits. Okay, go ahead and continue. Of them that slept. Mm -hmm. For since by man came death. Mm -hmm. By man came also the resurrection of the dead. Yes, sir. For as in Adam all die, mm -hmm. even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now check this out. I'm going to say it again. Go ahead and read. Mm -hmm. 23. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. So Christ is called the first fruit. But let's see what else he's called. Let's go hit Colossians real quick. Colossians 1 and pick it up at 12. He's the first fruit of them that slept. That means of everybody that died. He's the first fruit of them that rose from the grave, from going in there as flesh and blood and coming out with a glorified body. Okay? He's the first one for that. But look, let's see how it's written back here. Colossians 1 and 12. What does it say, brother? Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Yes. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness and mm -hmm. have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Yes. 
in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Yes, sir. So we have forgiveness through his blood, brothers. This is why? Because he died. Okay. Go ahead and read. 15. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. See, instead of calling them first fruit right here, it's calling them the firstborn of every creature. Go ahead and read, brother. For by him were all things created that are mm -hmm. in heaven and that mm -hmm. are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. The next time somebody try to argue with you about Jesus, not being the God of the Old Testament, the devil, somebody else. Take them to this verse right here. What you, see? you see that? <laughs> verse 16 in Colossians 1, it says, for by him were all things created. Can you read that verse one more time, Brother Try? This is, this is off topic, but we need to help y'all have some ammo to deal with these people. By the way, uh, peace, Brother Carlos. Uh, Sister Ray, Sister Jacqueline, uh, uh, Brother Noel Berry, Sister Arlisha Lee. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Yes, sir. 16. For by him mm -hmm. were all things created that are in heaven yep. and that are in earth, mm -hmm. visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. How about that? Keep on going, brother. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. Do y'all see this, brothers? How absolute oh. is that verse right there? By him, yes. all things consist. Okay? Yes. One more verse, brother. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. The that firstborn from what? Things, he's the dead. firstborn from what? The dead. Go ahead. That in all things he might have the preeminence. Okay, now we see that he's called the first fruit of them that slept and the firstborn from the dead. Now let's go back yesteryear. Let's go hit Job, right, right. the 18th chapter. Yesterday, yes, that's year. right, brother. It's <laughs> going to show you that the Lord don't change. There you go. Yes, he whispered, he whispered his words, his spirit in the ears of all these prophets, and everything that they said came to pass. Okay, yes, let's go. And, and then, guess what? And we're gonna show you that Joel wrote something that has not happened yet, but it's going to show you he's talking about the same individual that right. Paul wrote in Colossians about, and that he wrote in First Corinthians about. What's what say you, bro, Kevin? Yes, uh, he finna show you. Right down the line to the end. Hey, this is the same individual. He about to give you some prophecy mingled with some job description, okay? Yes, sir. Yo. Give you some of the Lord's job description right here. Mm -hmm. Now watch this. Job 18 and 5. What does it say, brother? Yeah. The light of the wicked shall be put out, and mm -hmm. the spark of his fire shall not shine. So who do you think is going to put out the fire of the wicked? Who do you think is going to do that? That's right. Go ahead and read, brother. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and mm -hmm. his candle shall be put out with him. Go ahead. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. So who you think going to take his strength from him? Who you think going to take the, 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 the strength of the wicked from the wicked? Okay? Who do you think is going to do that? Go ahead and the read, Lord. brother. Eight. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. Yes, sir. Now skip down here that verse 11. Terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. Mm -hmm. His strength shall be hunger bitten, and destruction shall be ready at his side. Yes, sir. He shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. Do y'all see that, brothers and sisters? Yes. It, it said the firstborn of death is going to devour his strength. That's right. The one, even Jesus the Christ, the first fruits of them that slept, the firstborn of the dead, the one that by that by him all things consist. Okay? Yes, yes. That individual, it goes to show you that he doesn't change and his word does not change. 
No. From from old and everlasting, and he's been speaking to the prophets since the world began, and they've been writing about him and telling you about him. And he is not double minded. He's not triple minded. He's not unstable in all his ways. Okay. That's right. He's as straight as straight as they go. Okay. Yes. And he does not change. He don't have to change. He put his laws down there. He put his statutes down here and his judgments and his feast days and his dietary law and his commandments. And you had better get with him and stay with him and not waver and not change because he is not changing. OK, he told you he will bust your head and put you in that fire for violations. And he's going to do that. I'm going to land right there. What you got, brother? Kevin? Right. Oh, that was some, that was some heat up, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Jesus' I like name. That, yes. I like that. Praise God. Yes, sir. Yes, Let's sir. keep going now. Because what I want to do is show you where something might look like. This is what it is. But the Lord, it, you know, just give you warning sometimes. And you think, wait a minute. Thought he said he was about to kill this person. Then he didn't do it. No, he gave you a warning. You understand? You got to look at these things. Let's go to Ezekiel, the third chapter. Ezekiel, the third chapter. See what he finna say first to Ezekiel. That's why it's good to read, man. Yes, sir. That's why he tells you to eat this roll. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He tell you to meditate upon this thing. Then he turn around and let you know, guess what? You need to be. Iron sharpening iron, you need to be dwelling with brothers and sisters in this word that's really dealing with this thing. What you said? You know, bounce the ball off of him, you know. What you said? Don't say? go nowhere listening to somebody else that can confuse you. Yes, so sir. Now, Ezekiel the third chapter, verse 17, brother, what it say? Son of man, have made the a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, here the I made you a, what? a watchman. What did he say he made? A watchman. Go ahead. Yes. Unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. Give them what? Warning. Warning from me, though. Yes, sir. I ain't worried about nobody else. I said me. Right. Yeah, right. Say? I'm the one that can damage. And do good, damage. Look, good look, brother Kevin. It, it, listen, if 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 Satan does show up and drama does show up at your house, the Lord dispatched him to come do that. Yeah. So you have to warn the people from the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yes. Okay. Yes. And he told us. He told us that Satan was going to do this. He mm -hmm. let us know. Yes, sir. His job description. So. 33 now. Let's go over to 33 and verse 1. 33 and verse 1. <clears throat> 33 and verse 1. When you get it, go ahead, brother. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Yes. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Yes, we're talking about warning. Go ahead. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Oh, you safe, because uh, guess what? You allowed the people to know, and the one that listened saved itself. Now, if you don't say nothing, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, six. But if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Yep, because he's supposed to speak on my behalf, warning them from me. Go ahead. So thou, o son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at, the, at my mouth, 
and warn them from me. Yes, sir. Two more. Go ahead. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require in thine hand. <sighs> Nevertheless, thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it. If he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Yes, indeed. Let's look at a situation that happened like that, though. Hey, if they don't listen to the priest, that'll be them self-inflicted wounds, okay? <laughs> right. Might as well throw a brick up in her and stood there. Wait a Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Jonah, let's look at something that's very familiar. And Jonah did not like this at all. Mm. That brother said, uh uh, no, no, that ain't how it's gonna go down. Mm -hmm. Lord said, I bet you it is. Three and one, go ahead. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Yeah, because the first time that he came to him, Jonah ran, jumped on a bus. I mean, not a bus, on a, a boat. I said bus. <laughs> he, listen, he took a, a about to say train again. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say train. But he got on the boat. He and tried Kevin to was about to say he took that 53. <laughs> <laughs> he took that A train. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, you got all these sources of new transportation now, boy. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, but, and the Lord allowed that whale to swallow him up. Mm -hmm. And he was there for three days and three nights because the Lord said, if you don't warn these people, what's going to happen? I'm going to get you. So now, let's look at the, go ahead and finish reading if you started already. Yes. Two. Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. Yes. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now look at what he's saying, what the Lord going to do to it. He said 40 days, right? Go ahead and read. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. Now somebody would look at this and say, oh, he changed his mind, man. Mm -hmm. He changed right here. No, he didn't. He gave warning. Mm -hmm. He said if they don't, this is what's going to happen. Skip down to verse 9. Or did you, you want, finish all that? Yeah, finish. I'm verse sorry. Seven? Verse 7. Want, I'm sorry. Yeah, verse 7. I'm sorry. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Yes. Skip down to nine. Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away from his fierce anger that we perish not? That's right. That's why I say in Proverbs, uh, what's that? that, that uh, is it in Proverbs or Ecclesiastes? A living dog is better than a, better dead, than a dead line. That's that Ecclesiastes. Yes, you sir. always got a chance as long as you're breathing. Yes, sir. You better keep kicking. Mm -hmm. He said a righteous man fall down seven times, but he get up. But the wicked falleth into mischief. Into mischief. Damn yes, the one want to stay out, you know. Mm -hmm. It's over for me. Woe is me. Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to keep scratching and clawing if I got breath in me. What you said. What Go you ahead. said. Come Go on, ahead. bro. Ten. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. 
Yes. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. Uh -huh. and he did it not. Oh, he repented. In other words, mm -hmm. his mindset right then and there, he had, he mercy. The Lord showed mercy because guess what? His whole plan from the beginning, we finna show you what the purpose was anyway. Mm hmm but now let's let's go to one spot and then we're gonna show you the purpose of that in the perfect in the first place. The Lord don't want to kill you, he wanna save you. Jesus said that in John the third chapter, they got him recorded saying, and I didn't come to kill me. I come to save men's lives. What are you talking about? Come on, bro. <clears throat> Man is killing himself. That's all that is. We commit suicide. James, the first chapter, verse one, go ahead. I mean, verse five, I'm sorry. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Yes. That give it to all men liberally. We know where the wisdom comes from. Not. So we know where wisdom and understanding come from, the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yes. And a braid of not. Yep. And it shall be given him. <clears throat> but let him ask in faith. Yes. Nothing wavering. That's right. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Yes. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. What he got that the Lord do not have and don't want. Go <laughs> Here you go, James. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. There yes, it is sir. right there. Yes, sir. See the separation between God and man right there? <laughs> Yep. One of them got a one track and consistent mind. Teach, bro. The other one is flip flop. Yep. Today is this way, tomorrow is that way. Mm -hmm. You're like, man, hold on. I thought we were. Right. I thought this was. No, right. I changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> it's the triple mind. I got to roll by myself. You understand that? Because I don't know. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to get. But with God, if He said, that's how it is. Amen. Amen. Brother Kevin. One of my one of my well, you know, I'm right out of high school. One of my homies had took off and went to the service. Came home. We saw him at a party. Me and one of my aces. <clears throat> and, and, and so we both decided, hey, we, we like what you hear. We out here doing nothing, going nowhere, getting in trouble. So we go to the service too, right? So we talked about it for a couple of days. Okay, cool. So on the day we supposed to go to the recruiter, I pull up at his house. He said, nah, man, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I changed my mind. Hey, man. All that brother, the brother haven't done nothing since then. Wow. Nothing. Mm. Wow. Uh, uh, uh. That that double mind, man. So every everything around him to this day is unstable. Okay, right. But anyway, now, let, let's see why he put the bow in the sky, and let's see why he. Excuse me. Let's see why he when Nineveh they repented, the king and all the people, why he repented him in his heart, and he showed them favor. Let's see. Last spot. Titus chapter 1 and verse 1 and 2. Let's see why. Go ahead and read, brother. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness. Yes, sir. In hope of eternal life. In with what? God in hope. Of eternal life. We're talking about eternal life, right? We read. Yes. Which God that cannot lie uh -huh. promised before the world began. Oh. So we should understand that. He cannot lie. It's impossible. Then it said, He promised immortality before the world began. Mm -hmm. That's what man was created for. Yes, sir. 
That's why boy got the lesson called man creating uh, to become God. That's controversial to people. Like, what? You, you can't be, say that. You must be out of your mind. Blasphemy. Yep. <laughs> but that's what Jesus said in John the 10th chapter. I and my father are one. Then he turned around and told you, listen, you ain't, don't it say in the scriptures that you are gods? Yep. They not say that you are gods. Mm -hmm. He said the scripture can't be broken. Right. In other words, my word can't be null and void. I can't turn it, twist it. It is what it is. I don't change. Right. If I say you're going to be God, I'm going to beat you into submission. That's why he didn't start over. He sent this son, and that's how it this thing going to play out. And James just so happened to show you the firstborn from the dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's something, boy. Right. So, but with that, I'm going to just turn it back over to the brothers now. Hey, that, that title was a great cap on that one, brother Kevin. Mm -hmm. Great yeah. cap. What, what say you, brother Rashad? Right. <laughs> His ways are higher than our ways. The best we must needs take heed, y'all, in it in all our ways and thoughts in Jesus' name. Excellent lesson, brother. Praise God. Yes, sir. I'm glad he don't change. Right. I know that's right, bro. <laughs> like we do. We be <laughs> tall up, you know. Yeah, we it wouldn't be nobody here. <laughs> hmm. Oh, I said I was gonna bless you with living uh five more years. Ah, oh, change my mind. Yeah. You got five months, brother. You gonna drop dead. You know? mm -hmm. Hey. Okay, let me get see. Let me get to the peoples. James, that look good. Them pictures you sent me, bro. Hey, praise the Lord. Oh boy, and you be moving, bro. <laughs> bless your Lord, Lord bless you. May the, the Lord, Lord bless you. the move, yes, sir. May the Lord bless your hands, brother. Continue to bless your hands, yes, sir. Praise and God. your yes, house, sir. brother, and your house. You have always been an inspiration to me, brother. Praise God. Hey, Amen. All you brothers give me uh, gas and, and, and charge my battery for real. Because every now and then we have to call each other. Me and Brother Rashad spoke earlier in the day too, man. So, you know. Yeah. We have to lean on each other. Huh? That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yeah, hey, we, sometimes them scriptures be looking long when we put them together. Me and James. Yeah. And, they, and they Brother Kevin, that's why, that's why I went short because I thought it was going to be too long. Too long. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Hey, I took two. I took three of them off. Mm -hmm. I took three, no, four of them off of mine. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be long. I did too. <laughs> but somebody had a question about, about somebody being reprobate. Reprobate, I, I, yeah, early. I saw that. I really don't want to deal with that one. Yeah. It's hard to tell, but what we can tell you when somebody have tasted this truth, and they start talking contrary, just like what we've been talking about tonight. They're in the danger zone. I don't know. I can't. I can't call it reprobate, but it's a dangerous spot to be in. It's a dangerous spot to be in, because the books say certain things. A certain thing is impossible when a person has tasted all this stuff. I was just gonna go to Hebrews six. Yes, sir, and walk away from it. You yeah. know. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, uh, we just have to be careful, man. And I heard a brother, I was watching a brother's lesson this morning. He was talking about how him and seven other people came into the word at the same time together. And he said, all seven of them gone. Y'all see that? Dang, brother. Yeah, that's cold. He's, he's the only one hanging on. You see? So... Yeah. Yeah, we have to just hold on, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, no matter what. Just hang on to the Lord. Hang on to the truth. Stay in a spot where you can prove what, you, what you're what doing, where you can read what you believe, you can read what you do. 
Just stay there. And don't let anybody take that thing from you. Don't let anybody take your crown, brothers and sisters. Too much is at stake right here. Yeah. Too much is at stake. That's why I just go, man. I'm going to tell y'all something. Well, a, a lot of years ago, a brother said, if you not a... Uh, if you comfortable serving the Lord, you need to add something to your plate. And I always say that it took it took me another minute, which was probably a whole another year to really grasp what that brother was saying. You see what I'm saying? So I just try to stay busy working in the vineyard, man. What you said? I just try to stay busy working, brother. And 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 and, and what I've learned is things just seem to work out. And the longer you do this, the more comfortable you're supposed to get. Mm -hmm. You ain't supposed to be 30 years of knowing who the true living God is and you still suffering major setbacks continually. Right. right. Things are supposed to, we're not saying it's going to be pieces and cream and a smooth road with no holes and no obstacles, but they should be easier to handle. Yes. You should be able to navigate them a little bit more smoothly. That's right, brother. You should be able to handle them with no pressure and no stress. They gonna come. Yes. Oh, uh, you know, you know. So look, I don't know. So I don't. I don't know why people taste this goodness of this truth and walk away from it. I, I have no idea. But I can't call them reprobate. <clears throat> I can just say it's a danger zone for sure. Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, because I done seen some man. And they they be right, like they didn't have positions in the class, work, they didn't mm -hmm. baptize, they understood it perfect, the word perfectly. And I mean they grab people. Next thing I know, they're away. I see mm -hmm. Christmas trees now, and I'm talking about seriously. Christmas trees raising their children in it now. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, right. hold on, brother. Yeah. He that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. My brother, look, look, look at these comments over here. Look at look at Alicia Lee, Sister Alicia, Sister Tiffany Spencer. Look at them comments, man. Mm. People come taste this stuff and turn their backs on it. I don't know how you do that. It's, it's a serious lack of faith and lack of fear. Mm. You just must simply just not believe the Bible. And taking a chance like that, like, yeah. like God ain't going to remember none of this stuff. No, nah, bro. And then, and then what if you die in the middle of walking away and sin? That's, that's the scary part. What if that happens to you? Then what? Mm. Then none of your righteousness will be mentioned unto you. That's right. We can read that. That's right, Sister Phyllis Black. Don't play Russian roulette with your life, brothers and sisters. Okay. But look, brothers and sisters, I got to tell y'all. If brother Kevin, if you don't have nothing else, brother, I've I've had a long week. It's been really long. Yeah. It's been a long rough week, brother. Sister Sabrina Flowers. Peace. There she go. That's right, sister. That's that. You got to have that fear. You got to. That's the beginning of wisdom. So, yeah. So, uh, oh, man, I'm going to do this. But anyway, y'all, uh, Brother Kim, you got anything else? Nah, I'm finna uh, do the same thing, bro. And we'll look, brothers and sisters, uh, we uh we 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 hope we didn't disappoint y'all with a short lesson tonight, but uh next week we'll 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 be sure to give y'all something juicy, okay? And uh and uh we hope you guys come back and, and spend bring the Sabbath in with us again next week because we really do appreciate you all and uh you know talking back and forth with you and we look forward to this. Yep. So peace and blessings, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the Sabbath. Yes, sir. Go ahead and come. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed.
Peace. Peace and blessings, everybody. Peace, y'all.